Good afternoon and welcome to the Cost Allocation Webinar. The National Rural Transit Assistance Program is very pleased to be co-sponsoring this webinar with our partners at the National Center for Mobility Management. We're going to begin the presentation with some quick housekeeping slides. So you'll see the control panel on the right side of your screen. Open it and close it by clicking on the orange arrow. Click the screen icon to view the presentation in full screen mode. And you can move the control panel anywhere you'd like on your screen. Under audio, select computer audio to use your computer's mic and speakers. Or if you prefer, you can use, the pho use phone call for phone number, access code in your audio pin. The audio pin will be shown once you join the webinar. And if you have any trouble hearing a speaker, let us know in the question box. You can share comments and questions by typing into the question box. We are requesting that questions be held until the end of the two presentations. We will have about 20 minutes at the end of the webinar to address questions. Please type in your question into the question box. Given the high number of participants, we will not be taking audio questions. And if you don't get your question answered during the webinar, we will provide a question and answer document to all participants within a week. These slides are available for download, or, or should be, or will be <laughs> available under download, and uh, or will be posted within one week at the National RTAP website, at the link shown on the, on the panel. A webinar transcript can also be provided by emailing info at nationalrtap.org. At this point, I'm going to turn this over to Robin Phillips, Executive Director of National RTAP. She will officially begin the webinar, review the agenda, and introduce the next speaker. Robin? Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. And we had almost 600 people sign up for this webinar, and that surprised us just a little, but um, we're happy to have you all here, and there's plenty of room. Um, I'm glad that you guys are all interested in learning more about cost allocation and the tools that are being presented today. I'm Robin Phillips, the Executive Director at National RTAP, and we are excited to host a cost allocation webinar with the National Center for Mobility Management. We're joined today by Amy, Amy Conrick of NCMM and Todd Hansen of Texas Transportation Institute and Rich Garrity of RLS. National RTAP and NCMM are jointly sponsoring this in hopes that we can facilitate greater access to the materials at FTA Technical Assistance Centers and your awareness of the materials available through our programs. Good fences make good neighbors and transparent cost allocation makes good partners. In response to the changes of the federal uh, uh, guidance uh, through OMB in the super circular, National RTAP began a process a couple years ago to update our financial management training modules, and they'll be available later this spring, but we retained Rich Garrity, and out of that uh, discussion came our interest in building a cost allocation tool for our um, transit uh, agencies that we work with. Uh, he, Rich was uh, brought in as a subject matter expert for that, and Todd was the chief technology person. Uh, during the process, we realized that supporting small systems trying to implement mobility as a service requires the ability to cost trips of different kinds, and that's how we ended up with the two-factor analysis. We decided we needed this simple tool because it would facilitate cost allocation by service, and Todd and the people at TTI have done a great job. Uh, NINCMM has also worked with Security to develop their brand new e-learning cost allocation module. That e-learning module was launched earlier today. Congratulations to NCMM. Rich Security helped develop both tools, so the information in the cost model is consistent across both products that we are talking about today. At the end of this webinar, we hope that you have the information you need to today to improve your ability to partner with other organizations and to manage your reporting data so that it works for your program needs. Now I'd like to introduce Amy Conrick, the director of NCMM. Amy is the director at the, um, of national projects at the Community Transportation Association of America. She works on community support and business development. She also 
serves as the director of the National Center for Mobility Management, a technical assistance center funded by the Federal Transit Administration, like uh, National Art Hub. Amy has worked as a writer, presenter, trainer, and focused on healthcare, transportation, and mobility management and transportation innovation. She has uh, mentored multiple teams in learning design thinking. Nancy Doherty, who introduced the housekeeping slides, she manages the National RTEP Tech Tools Program, and she has a background in transportation planning and a degree in, degree in civil engineering. She has spent most of her career as a consultant working on projects such as intermodal parking facilities, park uh, and shuttle systems, and traffic studies and road safety audits. Nancy is getting a crash course in public transit. Uh, and Nellie Cubahero is helping us with our slides. Uh, Nellie works with me up here in DC, and she's been doing a great job organizing this webinar, and she'll be available to assist with our questions in, in the question and answer segment and um, help us keep this project moving along. Uh, Amy, at this point, we invite you to begin. Okay, great. And was, thank you so much, Robin, for that introduction. Um, so as Robin said, I'm the director of one of the TA centers funded by FTA, um, the National Center for Mobility Management. Um, there is a picture of our front website and our URL. The easiest URL to use is nc4mm.org. That's the number four. Um, and thanks for the promo, our new course. I'm so excited that it is now live. Um, and you can find that. We'll show you a screenshot um, near the end of Rich Garrity's presentation where you can find the course. But from what the sh what's being shown on the screen now, if you look under that training tab, the very first choice is e-learning. You can get right there. And of course, like um, our TAPS, um, our trainings are free um, because they have been sponsored by the federal government. So please avail of those. We have several other trainings there as well. Um, I, I too am actually very pleased to see the number of people on this uh, webinar. I know that all of you have your hands full um, with trying to deal with the coronavirus. Uh, it's a whole new world, one that none of us really quite, we're just playing it by the seat of our pants, I think. Um, and so I was trying to think, how, what is the relation between that cost allocation piece and dealing with coronavirus? Um, and as Rich Garrity, I'm sure, will tell you, one of the most important things about cost allocation um, is knowing what it costs you to provide service so that you can be flexible and nimble and informed when you are entering into situations where you're going to contract to provide service for someone um, or you just need to know how to budget um, or you are in a conversation with someone, maybe one of your funders is saying, hey, how much is this actually costing? But think about within coronavirus, where we're all kind of scrambling, we're changing the way we're providing service, um, we may be entering some contracts to help doing food delivery. We're doing all sorts of different things. And so we want to know how much it costs us um, to provide service and to be able to, what if we have to do a contract and turn it around within a week because of how fast things are moving with coronavirus. So I think it's very important um, to have this training. As we were going through the cost allocation models before we posted them, I can't tell you how much I learned from what Rich has written for us. And I think I'm hoping that the course is written in a way I am not a financial expert and I can understand it. So we're hoping that that's your experience as well. So without further ado, I want to give a quick um, intro to Rich Garrity. If you guys do not know Rich already, um, one of the most important things you need to know is that he describes himself as a cost allocation geek. And I told him I've got a, a snippet of that, but certainly not to the extent that he does. Uh, but we're real pleased with that Rich. He really is an expert in so many different pieces, certainly in this one piece as well. He's got more than 43 years experience in grants and financial management, um, focusing on FTA and Office of Budget and Management or OMB requirements. Uh, so I think that's probably enough of an intro for Rich. Um, I'm just <laughs> going to turn it right over to him because the content is way more important than what I would have to say. Well, thank you, Amy. And welcome everyone. I know everyone has their plates rather full uh, given the circumstances of the day. I can tell you without hesitation that I see about 390 attendees on this workshop and you have by far and away broken the attendance record for any cost allocation webinar that has ever been presented by any organization 
in the history of public transportation. So uh, we thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to speak briefly about uh, the NCMM e-learning modules. We've developed the course really in a very simple, plain English fashion, organized around five modules. The first module is the importance and focuses on the importance of identifying the full cost of transportation service delivery. One of the early lessons I learned as an instructor many years ago in cost allocation, that if you don't fully recognize the cost that drive all the components of your transit service, no cost allocation model will produce accurate results. So it is critical to understand and recognize within your respective systems all of the costs that go into delivering a unit of service. We'll then in module two talk about uh, the confusing terminology that we use within the transportation industry uh, when we mention the, the terms cost allocation. If I were to ask you folks to define cost allocation, I might get 300 different answers, and the vast majority of you would be absolutely correct. We have come to use this term to represent a wide range of circumstances in the transportation industry, and we might need to focus our efforts on just one aspect of this problem. And we're going to refer to those as service-based cost allocation issues. That's what my presentation will be about, and that is what Todd will speak of in developing and explaining how the cost calculator works. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's behind the black box, what's inside, and how one builds a cost allocation model without going into too much details. And then we'll talk a little bit about the concepts of developing the fully allocated cost of the service versus what you charge the consumer for the service. That's addressed in module four. And then finally, like all things, there are real world issues that complicate the issue of uh, using a cost allocation model, uh, be it ride sharing where we mix clients of multiple agency on board any particular vehicle route or run, or when we have to transport individuals out of service area and we have downtime with respect to our vehicles, they present some costing issues uh, in the allocation process that we all have day to day basis that has to be addressed. And we talk about those issues in module five. And again, we put an emphasis as Amy has underscored on plain English. It's a 101 course and it is designed and it feeds in, I think very well with the RTAP cost calculator. So be aware that we want to underscore throughout this concept of full cost. There's an old computer terminology called GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. If we don't recognize the full cost of delivering a unit of service, no cost allocation model will produce accurate results. Important concept to remember. Then we want to talk about types of costs, different types of cost allocation, and then we want to talk about what exactly do we mean and what does national RTAP mean when they talk about this strange terminology, a two-variable cost allocation model. In public transportation, as in all uh, endeavors, uh, we try to recognize those costs that we consider direct costs, those that are directly attributable to the management and operation of a public transit service versus those costs that may benefit the public transit program, but are typically classified as indirect costs in our various accounting um, organizations. Indirect costs typically refer to facility and administrative overhead type costs. Many of us are merely part of a larger organization, whether we're part of a multi-purpose nonprofit organization a unit of city or county government where we depend on the services of other sister departments 
perhaps, for human resources, for legal, personnel, and the like. Those costs are real costs of the transit program, and they're typically captured by way of an indirect cost allocation plan and the use of an indirect cost allocation rate. That has to be recognized if we want to develop accurate cost estimates as to what it costs our agency to produce a mile or an hour or a passenger trip worth of service. And then finally, particularly for those of us in the nonprofit sector, uh, donations and contributions can play an important role in our ability, our ability to deliver transportation services. And even though they don't represent an out-of-pocket expense to our organization, when we're forced with management decisions of the type that we are facing today on an hourly basis as to what services we need to maintain and what we need to curtail to maintain our financial security, recognition of donations and contributions is critical. We talk about that in the MCMM course. And excuse me, I also want to call your attention when we talk about donations and contributions to federal cost allowability principles in 2 CFR Part 200. I'll refer to that as the uniform guidance. You may also hear it referred to as the super circular. Uh, that documentation is critical to understanding and accounting for donations and contributions within the scope of your transportation program. Many of you already realize that such do donations and contributions are not reimbursable under federal grant management principles, yet can be used to meet the matching share and play a critical role in service delivery. And it should be recognized within your accounting system. I mentioned previously that we've somewhat misused the term cost allocation. Uh, if we're in local government circles, we may use the terminology central services cost allocation plan to refer to the services of those sister departments that provide meaningful input in the areas of HR, personnel, uh, and the like to the delivery of public transportation services. That is a financial-based cost allocation methodology. Also, we may be under the umbrella of a public works department. We have one director of public works and perhaps that individual oversees public transit, streets and maintenance, and maybe several other functions of municipal government. Uh, the facility and administrative costs associated with departmental-wide management would typically be an indirect cost. Using a nonprofit example, a multi-purpose nonprofit agency might have an executive director, some central uh, administrative support services, a single facility for all programs and units of the agency. Those shared costs are typically referred to as indirect costs and are allocated to the respective benefiting programs by way of an indirect cost allocation rate. Those are financial-based allocation strategies. Generally outside the purview of the transit department, usually beyond our pay grade. So we oftentimes don't, uh, as transit managers, GMs, and transit CFOs, uh, don't deal with those issues. Um, we do, however, have service-based cost allocation plans. And we use the term cost allocation perhaps to describe a variety of circumstances that you see on a local level. You want to execute a contract perhaps with a local senior center to provide transportation to and from a uh, noontime congregate meal and activity center. Under NTD, we are required to report by mode. We may have one executive director or one GM of our transit agency and she or he oversees both our fixed route operation and our complementary paratransit service. Yet NTD and the FTA require us to split 
those shared costs of transit administration and requires us to allocate those shared costs to the two respective modes when we report annually under NTD. If we happen to be located near or in an urbanized area, and we might be one of the many organizations throughout the country that receive both 5307 and FTA 5311 funding, you'll notice in Chapter 3 of the 5311 circular, there is a requirement that we develop a cost allocation plan to split both operating and capital services between the two respective programs. And I dare mention the word charter, but there are circumstances where it is permissible for us to deliver charter services. Charter activities are not an eligible FTA expense, so when we perform charters, we have to demonstrate to FTA that we are not billing any unsupported deficits arising from the provision of those otherwise allowable charter services. We have to fully recover the cost to deliver that charter service. These are examples of service-based cost allocation methodologies. Now, many of you will probably perhaps argue with me that, boy, that speaker, Garrity, emphasized this concept of full cost accounting. I don't know why he spent time on that. My agency does a good job of that. So why do I need a cost allocation model if I'm already convinced I, I fully identify my cost of transportation? Why can't I just take my total expenses and divide it by total miles to come up with my fully allocated cost per mile? And I'll answer that argument with a simple set of diagrams. Here are two transportation trips each of 10 miles in length. One takes 10 minutes to deliver, the other 20 minutes to deliver. Do these two trips cost your transportation agency the same to deliver? And I believe that we would all agree that no, that trip on the right costs my agency more, not because here evidence of the phenomena of a two variable cost allocation model in that transportation costs are driven by both time and distance revenue hours and revenue miles or total vehicle miles total vehicle hours and as a consequence we have to build our cost allocation model based on those two factors. Those are the two variables that lead us to call a cost allocation model a two variable model. So in conclusion, I just want to refer you again to the five e-learning modules that have been developed uh, for the Mobility Management Center I encourage you to, at your leisure, study those uh, five modules. Again, plain English, simple to understand. You do not have to be a financial expert to grasp the concepts embraced in these modules. And I think this is a good prerequisite before you begin to use the National RPAP Cost Allocation Calculator. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to my peers at Texas Transportation Institute to continue on um, or back to Amy to talk about where we can find um, those e-learning modules. Great, thanks Rich. Um, and again, as I promised, this is a screenshot of our e-learning and there's the URL, you can see it. Um, we have six courses up there now and actually I, my staff corrected me, our um, cost allocation course will be on 
uh, uploaded by Friday. So I apologize, it's not quite there yet. Um, we're waiting on our web people to finalize that. Uh, so if you've already gone on and we're looking for it, that's why you can't find it. Um, so now I will then go back and um, I would like to now turn this over to TI. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in, Amy, and I just want to say thank you, uh, Amy and Rich, for an informative introduction to cost allocation and NCMM's new e-learning module. And now that we're all familiar with allocation, we will present and demonstrate National RTAP's cost allocation application, which integrates these principles into an easy-to-use tool available in both Excel and Access versions from National RTAP's website. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Todd Hansen. Mr. Hansen is an assistant research scientist for TTI, um, the Transit Mobility Program at TTI, with over seven years of transportation research experience. His work focuses on best practices for public transportation agencies, innovative practices in on-demand transportation, public transportation, and TNC partnerships, and analysis of transit agency operational and financial data. He leads an annual data quality review of operational and financial data from small urban and rural transit agencies in the state of Texas to ensure fitness of data for reporting to the state and subsequent world national transit database reporting. Uh, Mr. Hanson recently <laughs> led the development of the two variable cost allocation calculator for National RTAP, which created Microsoft Access and Excel application tools for small urban and rural and tribal transit agencies to allocate expenses using service, financial, and operational data. Thank you very much, and uh, Todd. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. Um, yeah. are, you, are you all going to hand the uh, presenter role over to me? All right. I did, yeah. Sounds good. And you yeah, can see did. my screen okay? Yes. All right. And everyone, yep. Okay, so um, with that introduction from Rich on what two variable cost allocation is, I'm going to go into uh, this exciting uh, tool, the cost allocation calculator that we have the pleasure on uh, working uh, together to develop. Um, as uh, Nancy was mentioning, this was uh, for uh, National RTAP. Uh, the calculator um, is a um, application, a, a set of application tools um, that can either be used in Microsoft Access or Excel uh, that enable rural and tribal transit agencies and small urban agencies uh, the ability to allocate expenses using the two variable methodology of vehicle hours and vehicle miles. The calculator tools guide user input of service, financial, and operational data to allocate expenses by routes, travel modes, uh, jurisdictions or geographies, and other common transit designations. Uh, the calculator is built on two readily available software platforms, uh, Microsoft Access and Excel, um, and it performs identically in both platforms with some slight differences on input screens and such, uh, just based on the software. Uh, the model requires no special skills in either Excel or Access. Uh, we've designed them to be um, uh, as user-friendly as possible. Um, and there are menu-driven instructions to provide um, to help guide the user to provide the information required to successfully use them. Uh, moreover, the calculator relies on data uh, that should be readily available to every urban, small urban, rural, or tribal transit agency, meaning that no new data collection will be necessary to use the calculator. Uh, the calculator can be used to allocate costs to individual routes and services or groups of routes, such as federal grant programs, contracts with human service agencies, modes of service, purchase transportation, uh, UZAs and ge geographic jurisdictions, as well as shared ride demand responsive service. So these calculator uh, applications are available uh, along with supporting materials uh, from the National RTAP website. Uh, this is a, a screenshot of uh, that area of the website, and I think we'll have more information later on it. Um, to download the calculator, you must first uh, create an RTAP cloud login account, um, which is free to sign up, and then you, you'll be able to download the available resources. Uh, the dashboard page has links to download the applications, and then the support center page has links to download the calculator instructional manual, uh, view the instructional manuals, introducing and demonstrating the applications, uh, which we did uh, last year when we launched them, as well as pages with frequently asked questions and related links for the calculator. 
So I'm going to go briefly through these um, the four-step process that uh, the application is set up for data input and outputs. Um, in step one, users are required to enter information for all of the routes and services their agency oversees. The characteristics needed in this section for each route include uh, the route or service name, the NTD travel mode, the um, NTD jurisdiction or geography name. Uh, we'll talk more about being able to customize that. Um, the service type, whether it's um, uh, purchased transportation or directly operated, uh, sponsored or general public service, as well as the funding source that you'd like to designate it under. In step two, the financial data section has users input data from their total operational expenses that they would wish to allocate to routes and services. And this is according to um, USOA object classes um, used in charge of chart of accounts and required uh, by NTD for full reporting agencies. Um, the expenses information is classified into um, the appropriate designation so that the calculator can sort these into the correct cost function categories. Um, this step will also allow you to assign expenses to either all of your routes or to an individual route or group of routes, um, depending on what it applies to. In step three, the operational data section has users input data for hours, miles, and passenger trips for each of their routes or services previously entered in step one. Uh, users have the option to input passenger hours and miles data for any route or service that's classified as sponsored service. And this is where you can um, do sub allocation for shared rides on demand responsive modes, which I'll demonstrate later in this presentation. Uh, lastly, on step four, the cost allocation step takes that data input from the previous three steps and allocates uh, variable and fixed cost by vehicle hours and miles data, as well as passenger hours and miles data for shared ride demand responsive service. Uh, the allocation process is performed for individual routes and services, as well as groups of routes, um, such as NTD travel mo modes or funding programs. The application then produces summary reports with the fully allocated costs for routes and services, along with cost by transit function and performance metrics calculated from the data. And I'll demonstrate what those look like. So on results and outcomes from the application, uh, using this methodology of the calculator enables agencies with the tools to better achieve a consistent and equitable process for cost allocation. The calculator can help transit agencies prepare documentation for needs such as federal grant reimbursement requests, NTD and state required data reporting, and internal accounting and budgeting information. The cost allocation process used by the calculator achieves a consistent and transparent treatment of costs while eliminating duplicative or misallocated costs. The calculator can help agencies use an accurate and equitable cost by transit program, travel mode, service type, and jurisdiction or geography, which can be particularly helpful in NTD reporting and pricing of services. The calculator determines reliable cost information by transit function, such as operations, fuel, vehicle maintenance, non-vehicle maintenance, and administration, and calculates accurate data measures for evaluation of service performance. Uh, performance measures for cost efficiency and effectiveness in the calculator output reports can help transit agencies with pricing of services and, and be used as a basis for budgeting and projecting transit service. Uh, the two variable methodology used by the calculator, um, as Rich was discussing earlier, uh, meets NTD, uh, FTA, and OMB reporting requirements. So here's an example table of total costs and performance measures that are calculated by the calculator as report outputs. Um, this information can help transit agencies know the cost of a particular route um, or service modes, as well as shared rides services within demand responsive modes. So at the top, we have the differences between a uh, fixed route service and demand response. And then you can also get your shared ride demand responsive sub allocated total cost and cost metrics there um, as an example. Uh, the calculator computes these metrics for each route or group of routes or services that can be used to measure performance of the service, uh, price service with sponsors and local contributors, and plan for future service. So in a moment, I will demonstrate how to generate these outputs in the calculator. So here at step four, this is where the calculator executes um, the methodology for cost allocation at the push of a button. Uh, once you've entered all your service financial and operational data during steps one through three, 
uh, push either the click to allocate cost or run cost allocation button in step four, uh, dependent on if you're in Access or Excel, in order to run the process. Then click the generate summary report or view reports button to show the reports for total allocated cost and performance measures. The calculator will show the data outputs for each individual router service, as well as groups of routes um, in the categories that are um, designated in step one. So now I'm going to jump out of the PowerPoint for a minute and just show you in both the Excel and the uh, Access application versions uh, what this looks like in terms of generating the information. So here I already have data um, entered in steps one through three just to show you real quick. Um, we have uh, previous webinar trainings that show um, the actual data entry for all those steps. Uh, but here I wanted to focus first on the report generation. So when you're in the Excel application, if you click to allocate cost, it will run the process like so. Um, we can see here the allocated cost for each of these categories. And then clicking on the generate summary report button generates the summary report in the next tab. So currently in this tab, we have tables for each of the designations of the service data characteristics. So we have travel modes here um, for demand response and motor bus. And you can see our operational cost by transit function categories, the total allocated cost, and then the service effectiveness and cost efficiency and cost effectiveness measures calculated from those data inputs. We also, if you scroll to the right, you can see tables for the individual routes or service name. We have NTD jurisdiction, which can also be used for geography if you want to do different cities or counties, which I'll demonstrate later. Directly operated or purchased transportation. General public or sponsored service. And then within um, that sponsored service category to go to the, um, the last table, we have the sub-allocated shared ride demand responsive information. So you can view this in Excel or you can print the report as well. Um, you can print this to a printer or as an Adobe PDF. I'm gonna click okay. It's gonna ask where do I wanna save this? It generates the PDF. And then I have the reports like so. We're actually working on an update currently to um, have these reports in a, a portrait mode and have them stacked together so it'll be a one or two page uh, report all together. Then to show this in Access, here uh, when you open the Access application, you'll see the data that you've entered already if you if you started. Um, you, if you go to step four, to run cost allocation, it just ran the cost allocation process there. And then I can select, do I want to see this by mode, area, funding source, um, each, any of the categories I want to. I'm going to click on individual services. I can see the results as a report within uh, the application itself. Um, I entered an extra route here to show um, just how multiple routes in any of these modes can be entered. I can also print this report in a PDF. So likewise here, I'm going to go to, let me save this in a place I can find it. I can print the report. It will show up as a PDF, like so. I can also view, view this as a table as it would appear in a spreadsheet. And I can export these uh, results from the Access database into an Excel format. So likewise here, it asked me where to save the results. I can click OK. And then here, it will open the Excel file. And I have the same results um, here for the cost, the total cost, as well as the metrics over here. If I want to um, use the data in some other, some other format that way. All right, so up next, um, to talk about some of the results. Um, the results for the individual routes and different service types are useful in a variety of data reporting, service pricing, planning, and budgeting functions. 
Uh, for instance, in NTD reporting, agencies or state DOTs are required to report data by travel mode, such as fixed route bus or demand response, uh, by FTA funding programs, such as Section 5307 or 5311, and by urbanized or rural areas, or by service types between directly operated and purchased transportation. This calculator um, service characteristics that are entered in the calculator does all of that automatically. Uh, both the Excel and Access versions of the application produce PDF reports, and then the Access application allows exporting data inputs and outputs uh, through an Excel spreadsheet file. So in the calculator, you have the ability to customize different route characteristics, and these are some of the three uh, most common that we get questions about and um, can provide the most use for variability depending on uh, the characteristics of the routes at your transit agency. So up first, to allocate by a specific funding source, uh, in the funding programs tab in step one, you can edit the available funding programs that are available as categories. There are default categories listed for 5307, 5310, and 5311, but users can also classify a route by any customized federal, state, local uh, funding program that they want to, such as the uh, direct service contract or local contribution name. So you don't have to um, designate it under a federal funding program if it's a local, um, locally supported route specifically. Um, for geographies, you can also allocate data by a specific geography um, and customize the available um, names from UZA or non-UZA labels. Um, those are the defaults in step one, but you can also enter in a city or county name where the service operates uh, should you choose to. You can also allocate costs for one route between two geographies, uh, such as if you have a service connecting a rural area and an urbanized area, you can use the calculator uh, in this way by inputting the route name twice with an applicable subdescription. So if you say route one rural and route one urban, for instance, uh, one note is that by splitting up this route, you also have to have the data available for hours, miles, and trips for each portion of that route. Then for suballocation of shared ride demand response, uh, demand responsive service, you can allocate, um, suballocate the data in this man manner um, through classifying the route as a sponsored service in step one. And then in step three, you'll be given the option to enter sponsor names and associated passenger miles, passenger hours, and passenger trips for each sponsored service on that demand response route. So before I demonstrate some of those functions, I wanna go over um, some, common question, some other common questions we get. Um, in terms of obtaining data for the calculator, um, this calculator is formatted to use data that transit agencies already collect. Um, for their, their costs and operation uh, functions. Uh, the intention of the calculator is that the transit agency will not need to collect new data for services um, in most cases. Um, for definitions on data labels, um, we designed the calculator to use standard terms from the National Transit Database and the Uniform System of Accounts to organize the information. Uh, on the National RTAP website, uh, the tools, I, the resources I mentioned earlier, we have an available instructional manual. Um, with a, in, in the appendices, we have um, definitions for each uh, term and uh, data element that's used in the calculator. We're currently working on a future update of the calculator that will include uh, helpful icons and further information within the Excel and Access applications um, to discuss what certain data labels mean. So that'll help with that as well. Um, for using the calculator with one route or service, the main purpose of this calculator is to allocate costs across multiple routes and services. Um, however, should you choose to, you could use it to enter in um, a single route and then um, calculate your performance and cost metrics for that route. Just know that all the financial information will just be assigned to that one route, so you won't actually be allocating it. Um, currently, the Excel application requires that you use multiple routes. Um, to continue to step two, but in our next update, uh, we will allow you to continue with just a single route entered. Um, if you need to change data that you incorrectly entered the first time, uh, data can be changed in both applications. Um, in the access application, since it is a functioning database, um, it allows you to overwrite existing records in the database 
at any time during the data input steps. Um, the Excel application requires you to delete existing records first and then enter the new record with the correct information. And then one question that we get um, uh, it sometimes is how does this work for 5310 programs? Um, 5310 programs um, can use this calculator in the same manner as urban and rural transit agencies. We designed it um, to have that functionality as well. So with the funding source and geography labels uh, being completely customizable, you don't have to use the um, already available designations that are, that are in the applications. Uh, you can customize it to whatever name you, you want. And then costs can be allocated for different sponsored trips in that shared ride demand responsive uh, manner. Uh, so I'm gonna demonstrate that next. So to jump out of my presentation again, I'm gonna do this in the access version. So here to discuss first the, um, the elements for um, geography and NTD jurisdiction as well as federal funding source, you can within the calculator, these are the available designations that I have for rural or urbanized area, but you can also edit and add a new area should you choose to. So I'm gonna add a new area here. I'm gonna say county service. Save and add a new service area. And now I have that option as well, Let's, if I want to change this route. And I can do this, I can add any label that I choose to. And you can see that it updates in the calculator in that way. I can do the same for funding programs. If I want to add a new program, I'm gonna say, like that, I'm gonna save the record. And then once again, I have this available. So you can do this in Excel as well. You can enter in for the jurisdiction or geographic area as well as federal funding source. You can enter in any label, um, any name that you want to, just the same as you would enter a route or service name. Then for sponsored service, so in this uh, sample data set, we entered in the demand responsive as being a sponsored service. Um, within both the applications, the, you are then given the choice to allocate uh, for these sponsored services by passenger hours and passenger miles data. So this does require you to, to have that passenger hours and passenger miles data determined. But once you're in there, um, you can um, enter in that data. You can enter in as many sponsors as you would like along that demand responsive sponsored route. Um, here I have two that I've entered for, um, I've actually set up this route so we have general public service along with adult daycare service on the, riding on board the same demand responsive route. Uh, we have passenger hours, miles and trips um, here that you're able to edit. And then once again, you can um, edit new sponsor names as you need to in this menu and provide a description if you need to as well. I'm gonna briefly, before we get to questions, I'll show you where to do that in step three. So here in step three, I've already entered in, we have one route for demand responsive, um, this uh, Texas County here. And we have a sponsor for um, general public trips and uh, Medicaid trips in this example. If I go to um, click on um, entering in operational data, this gives me the option here if I would like to allocate further by sponsor. And then once I enter in, this is an example. Once I enter in that information here, this pop-up menu will come up and I can enter in that information uh, like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to um, uh, I believe I'm handing it back off to Nancy, and uh, we will take your questions for um, uh, either my presentation on the calculator or uh, the N NCMM um, uh, upcoming cost allocation module. Uh, Todd and Rich, thank you very much. You both did a great job explain, explaining cost allocation and the application. Um, so our presenters are available to answer any questions you might have. Again, please type in your questions into the question box. Um, and I'll st I want to start with one real 
quickly. Todd, how do you support users who may have a question on the calculator? Mm -hmm. So uh, currently, if you do have a question, um, if something's unclear and um, you know the the guidance that we have in the uh, the instructional manual and, and webinars and uh, those resources that are available online. Um, if you send your question to um, National RTAP, um, they will um, help with uh, getting the question to us if there's something on a, a particular um, service that you're not sure how to, to enter it into the application or how, how it fits for your agency. Um, TTI is currently you know, under a, a support um, agreement to help with those questions. And so um, we can help you know, straighten out specific information um, on that. And that's um, part of the calculator support that we're doing in terms of the updates as well. So any, uh, whether it's a question on how to use the calculator currently, or if you have feedback on how the calculator can be um, improved for you know, either user friendliness or functionality um, at your agency to help with what you're trying to use it for, um, providing that feedback to National RTAP um, uh, then helps, helps us, uh, TTI, work uh, with them to, to help make the calculator better um, and, and help enable you to use it. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, we'll go to... Um, so I have a question here from Jean Meyer, and she asks, how would public transit systems that do not directly report to NTD, but rather report through their state DOTs, complete the financial data in the calculator? Mm -hmm. A good question. So, um, like we said, this uh, follows the NTD definitions for um, agencies that are using it for full reporters. But um, for the financial information that you, that a transit agency, a rural transit agency, a subrecipient would um, report their information um, or you know request uh, reimbursements or, or those sorts of functions from the state DOTs, um, the financial information. Uh, would be um, the same fi financial information that would be entered um, or reported to the state DOTs in that manner. Um, we set up the calculator. It's it's sort of intended for annual data, but you can use it for um, if you want to do monthly cost allocation processes um, in order to um, get to the that um, uh, financial reimbursement or budgeting um, you know information from the outputs. Um, you can use it for you know a monthly time period or a quarterly time period as you see fit as well. So the financial um, information, whether you're um, reporting directly um, to NTD or if you're reporting to the state, uh, it would follow the same same definition and guidelines. Okay, thank you. I think this question um, from Nancy Young Oliver would be for NCMM, whether it's uh, Amy or Rich. But where do we obtain access to the five modules mentioned? the new program uh, so this is, yeah this is Amy I can answer that so the URL you would use is NC the number four mm as in Mary Mary dot org slash e hyphen learning and again the slides the course will be available um, as on Friday is what my staff tells me now okay perfect <laughs> thank you um, this is from uh, Fred Butler, someone that we know. Um, can you please address, and I'm not sure who will answer this question, but you can jump in, Todd or Rich. Can you please answer how agencies with numerous other non-FDA funded programs might be able to utilize this? Would they need to have, had to have as cost allocation plan in place already, or could this um, tool help determine what the cost allocation rate would be? Um, I'll start in terms of the being able to determine uh, the cost, allocated costs for routes and services that are not um, under federal programs. Um, with being able to customize the um, the funding source information as well as the geographic um, jurisdictions for each of the the routes, um, it can be customized within the calculator at a local level. Um, however, the agency sees fit for their needs. So um, the, it would still use the same vehicle hours and vehicle miles um, to variable methodology, uh, but just being able to use that at a local level and customize the route characteristics in that way, um, it, it, it could be scaled um, you know, essentially by being able to customize um, those labels, um, if that makes sense. Rich, did you have anything to add? 
Yeah, the only thing I wanted to add, if you're dealing in a non-FTA environment and you're looking to try to isolate and identify uh, indirect costs for purposes of developing an indirect cost rate, that's a financial-based application and the two-variable RTAP model does not, it was not designed to do that. I would refer you to um, an appendix, uh, either appendix four or appendix seven to two CFR part 200, uh, if you're looking at how to calculate agency indirect costs, a financial-based cost allocation methodology that is not incorporated into the RTAP two variable model. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Um, I've got another question. Um, we're just going to take one or two more because we're getting close to three o'clock. The question is, if we are temporarily fare-free, how will that impact our cost allocation calculators? Can we update our model for a few weeks? When we are fare-free and fixed route, must all services be fare-free? There are really mm -hmm. two questions there. Um, the two variable model is designed to allocate costs, not necessarily revenues. So we have a situation if fixed route services are not generating any revenues, that really won't impact uh, the output necessary. The uh, Unless you're talking about costing services. the cost of fare collection. Yeah, the concern that I had when I saw that question <laughs> is if it's a fixed route operator, and there is a necessity to provide complementary paratransit as a supplement to the fixed route service, must it also be fare free? And I believe under the Americans with Disabilities Act, the interpretation would be yes. Now, that said, we are under an emergency situation and I would refer the questioner to the FAQ uh, COVID-19 uh, page at FTA dot 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 gov for answers um, on those emergency type scenarios yeah okay. and i would i would just add to that with using the calculator for you know scenarios such as this one um, if you're looking to understand the cost for a particular time period such as adjusted service um, you know during or because of um, covid 19 and um, you know, any service adjustments that need to be made as well as any additional cost um, that the agency has. Um, I would use the, I would suggest using the calculator tools for that specific time period that um, you're looking to understand the allocated cost for um, rather than just doing, you know, an overall annual period. Um, but that way you could get to, at least to that question of the particular cost during that adjusted service period. Um, but it, it wouldn't, as Rich was saying, it wouldn't necessarily um, uh, be affected by the, the fair revenue side. It would be more the operational expenses side. Okay. Uh, I think this is a similar type of question. What if you have a seasonal service like a national park service that is only run, a national park service shuttle that is only run from May to September? Do you have to take it out and put it in depending on what month you're allocating? Mm -hmm. So if you have a, if you have um, specific costs for that seasonal service, um, like if, if for that seasonal service, if it's only supported or if it's supported by, um, you know, one local contract or a couple local contracts, for instance, and you support it um, and you have the isolated expenses for it for so driver labor and other costs for that specific seasonal service. You can use that within the calculator along with your overall services because you can um, allocate financial information um, accord to, to just one direct route. Um, I can show that real quick in terms of where you would do that, just in terms of an example um, within here. Um, but sure. in the financial in the financial data, um, this um, I didn't uh, I briefly touched on this in the presentation, but. Um, you can select whether an expense record goes to all of your services. Um, you can select whether it goes to a specific mode, a specific funding program, um, service area. The, I'm just showing these tabs here come out. Um, or you can have it go to a single route. And so I think that would be, in this instance, um, let's say route two um, was your seasonal service there. You can select that expense as well as multiple expense records. 
um, and do that single assignment. And so that way it's not allocated and spread out like it would be the rest. So that's how you, you would use it if you have the isolated expenses. Um, if, if not, if, if the expenses are grouped in with everything else, um, then you would have to do it um, as a separate process. Todd, did you say you wanted to demonstrate something? I'm sorry, can you, not see my, can you not see my screen? I don't believe I've shared. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, should be good now. Okay, sorry, I thought I was sharing my screen right there. Um, so here in step two, um, let me go out and then come back in. Um, and this is the same in the Excel application as well. Um, you can apply a cost to be to either all of your services or to um, a different group of services. So here's like by travel mode, for instance, uh, by funding program, um, or in this case for a seasonal service, um, I selected this as an example to be for a specific route. Um, like so, or I could have this apply to two of my routes, but not um, all of my routes like that. So you, if you have the expenses isolated, you can do that direct assignment rather than things being allocated across um, the entire service, um, service, group of services that you have in the application. Thank you. Let's see. Todd, um, how can I submit any ideas I might have for additional needs or features for the calculator? Is that through National RTAP? Um, yeah, I would say you'd su submit it. Um, you, you can contact me as well, uh, or you can go through uh, National RTAP. And uh, uh, Nancy, I'm not sure on which page online um, the, the contact is available. Um, but I would, oh, again, show, yeah. if you have any feedback on uh, or questions on how to use it for um, a specific instance or feedback on improvements for the calculator, um, we'd certainly welcome that. Okay, thank you. All right, well, at this point, we're getting, we're getting a little after three o'clock, and I think that um, we will wrap things up now. Unless any of our presenters wanna, any final comments? Okay, so make sure. So the contact information should be showing on your screen at this point uh, for NCMM and National RTAP. So at this point, we are concluding the webinar. And on behalf of National RTAP and NCMM, thank you, Rich and Todd, for your presentations. The con contact information is on the screen. And we sincerely hope you'll reach out to us with any comments or questions on today's webinar. NCMM's brand new e-learning e tool and National RTAP's cost allocation calculator. And we look forward to future coordinated webinars with NCMM. I think this was great. And then finally, if you could take a moment to take the webinar survey, we will be sending um, a link to you by email. And there may be a link in the chat box. I'm not sure about that just yet. Um, but regardless, you will get an email. And we'd really appreciate your feedback because we can only improve with your feedback. Um, so thank you very much for your participation. <laughs>